Hello guys, welcome you all to this short lesson and today we are going to discuss about masala bonds. So it is a very important topic related with UPSC prelims as well as mains. Even in 2016 UPSC asked one question on this topic. Before moving to discussion, let me introduce myself. I am Chils Thomas Kaushi, an educator at clearigas.com. And guys, one request, if you like this lesson, please subscribe to our channel and also kindly provide your feedbacks in the comment section. Alright, so I am planning to take this lesson in these parts. First day we will see the background of masala bond and then we will understand the concept and then we will get to know about the characteristics and then we will see how it benefits the investors and issuers and in the last part we will solve a couple of MCQs related with masala bond. So that's how I plan this lesson. Let's start our session. As I said before, UPSC in 2016 prelims asked this question with reference to IFC masala bonds sometimes seen in the news which of the above statements is are correct statement 1 the international finance corporation which offers this bond is an arm of world bank and statement 2 they are rupee denominated bonds and are a source of debt financing for the public and private sector and you have to choose the right statements so guys, we will set aside this question for a while. Let's now understand the background of this masala bond. So the concept of masala bond was introduced nearly seven years ago, exactly in 2013 by the government and International Finance Corporation. And the IFC, that is International Finance Corporation, is an international financial institution that basically worked to encourage private sector development in the less developed countries and it is a member of World Bank Group and it is headquartered in Washington. So that is IFC. So the situation which led IFC to create Masala Bond was 2013 was a year in which we faced much crisis related to our economy. RBI said current account deficit stood at a record 4.8% of GDP and rupee breaching 66 level against the dollar which was record crash of rupee that time and uh, massive outflow of foreign investments happened and reasons for this crisis are many fold the corruption issues were there NP issues were there so to revive economy then UPA government in consultation with international finance corporation decided to launch rupee denominated bonds in international market and that is masala bonds so that is the background and origin of masala bond now let's understand the concept Guys, I hope you are aware about bonds, the normal bond, their debt instruments. For instance, suppose that I run a company and I need to raise some funds. For that, I have mainly two measures. One is bond and other is loan. Comparison between loan and bond are given here. The basic idea of bond is that it is a debt instrument used by government and private companies. And loan is also used by individuals, which means Apart from government and private companies, loan is also used by individuals. And next is the interest rate of bond is fixed, which means I am issuing a bond and an investor is purchasing it. Here I have to pay the principal amount when the bond period is over along with an interest rate. This rate is say 8%, uh, 10% accordingly. They are fixed at one particular rate. And this rate won't change also. But in case of loans, even though the interest rates are fixed but they can be variable according to the rates of the central bank that is RBI in our case you know that RBI changes monetary policy rates and according to it loans interest rates also may change so that is written here and next is bond can be sold in bond market to public and financial institutions public means government only and loans are given by banks and next one is if you see the return of bonds, that is in simple term, uh, bond principal amount plus its interest. Interest is the profit for the investor. So for bonds, the interest rates are generally lower. Not always, but when comparing to loan, the, it is saying that loan is having higher interest rates than bonds. So that are the basic difference and comparison between bonds and loans. And our masala bond, as the name indicates, is a type of bond. If we go by definition, it states they are rupee denominated bonds issued outside India by an Indian entity, 
we will discuss in detail so guys let's now understand how in the normal case the bonds works here suppose that i own a company and my company name is red and we are in need of funds and we decided to raise some fund through issuing bonds and you all know google is an international company and they agreed to purchase my bonds and my company red and google comes into an agreement and we decided that this bonds will be on 10% interest rate for 5 years and uh, our bond amount is let's assume 100 dollars so in 2020 i am receiving 100 dollar from google and in 2025 i have to repay the 100 dollar principal amount and 10% interest rate so it comes 110 dollars i have to repay in 2025 here while i issuing this bond suppose that the dollar to rupee rate is 75 that is in 2020 1 $1 is equal to rupees 75 so hence for 100 dollars i am getting 100 into 75 rupees 7500 in rupee terms i am getting this much amount through the bond and as you know our currency rate depreciate which means we often see in the news if in this week the dollar to rupee rate is 75 next week it might be 77 and next month it may be 80 likewise and there are several factors leading to this depreciation i am not going into that so what happens here is when i return this bond amount after 5 years in 2025 to google i have to return 110 dollar including interest and at that time after 5 years if the rupee depreciated and becomes in 2025 say 1 dollar is equal 85 rupees then my 110 dollar is equal to 110 into 85 that is 9350 in rupee terms i am returning this much amount so how much i got 7500 now i have to return 9350 so here had it been the same rupee dollar rate in 2025 as of 2020 that is 1 dollar 75 in 2020 had it been the same rate 75 for 1 dollar in 2025 i should have paid only 110 into 75 that is 83 sorry 8250 only because my currency depreciated i had to pay rupees 1100 extra in this case here is why masala bonds comes into play so as we see in the definition it is rupee denominated bonds that is the keyword masala bonds are the rupee de- denominated bonds and here my red company and the google comes into an agreement for 100 dollar my company will pay 10% interest for 5 years and this will be on the rupee denomination which means when i issue the bond the rupee rate was 1 dollar is equal rupees 75 in 2020 and i get 7500 rupees and after 5 years i have to repay google 110 dollar on the same rate 75 rupees a dollar so in 2025 i will repay 110 dollars to google at the rate of 1 dollar equal to 75 so if in 2025 if my currency depreciated and the dollar rate is 1 dollar is equal to rupees 85 i don't have to consider this in masala bond like in the normal bond case so that is the concept of masala bond apparently it is a gain for the issuer provided 
if the local currency that is our rupee is depreciating because actually 110 dollar in 2025 is 9350 and i only have to pay 110 into 75 that is 8250 and in this case the google the investor is not getting 110 dollars actually because 110 dollars in 2025 is 9350 but we are paying them only 8250 rupees which is less than actual 110 dollars so in effect masala bonds will bring more dollar to india and you know in any economy if the local currency in our case it is the rupee if the rupee is going out of the country then that would depreciate the currency and if more dollar comes into our economy then our economy would be in a better position and our currency also appreciates so that is the basic concept of masala bonds and it is issued by an indian entity in foreign markets that is here in our example my red company is an indian company and i am issuing this bond in say london stock exchange and from there google is purchasing my bonds and next point we already discussed it is a debt instrument used to raise money from foreign investors in local currency and this falls within the external commercial borrowing policy and this is used by private as well as government entities also recently the kerala government raised funds through this root of masala bond there was a devastating flood happened in the state of kerala in 2018 and they issued this bond for rebuilding the state uh, that is it now we'll see what are the characteristics of this bond guys maturity period for this masala bonds are actually more than 3 years and uh, this bonds can be purchased by a resident of a country that is a member of financial action task force fatf it is an intergovernmental organization that works to combat financial crimes so it can be purchased by a resident of a country who is the member of fatf and also those resident from the country whose securities market regulator is a signatory to international organization of securities commissions multilateral memorandum of understanding so that are the condition for the purchaser or investor and the proceeds from this bond that is the amount raised from this bond can only be invested in refinance of rupees and ncds ncds are non convertible debentures and for development of integrated townships or affordable housing projects and then for working capitals to corporates so for these purposes only the money raised can be invested and at the same time it cannot be invested in real estate activities other than development of integrated township or affordable housing projects and investing in the capital market and using the proceeds for equity investment domestically is prohibited and activities prohibited as per the fdi investment guidelines and for purchase of land this cannot be used so for these all purposes this amount the proceeds cannot be invested and let's now see how it benefits the investors you might be thinking that for foreign investors investing in masala bond could reduce their return as we discussed in the example and but why would the investor take currency risk and invest in masala bond there are two reasons for this basically one is that masala bonds offer high interest rates than normal as the currency risk is involved it will obviously issued at a higher interest rate and second one is investor betting that rupee will be steady and appreciate from the current level versus dollars that that is their assumption and uh, if that happens you know that investors will be getting more dollars for the same value and if the rupee appreciates then it will be a benefit for the investor and if rupee depreciates it will be a benefit for the issuer and uh, you might be thinking why the investors are confident that rupee will appreciate even we don't have any such hope at least for the near future the reason is that unlike other emerging markets in the world like russia brazil south africa indonesia the indian market is predominantly an importer of commodities rather than export so we import more than we export and as we all know globally oil price is declining and eventually the commodity prices also decline so as the oil price is declining it will have a multiplier effect and it will reduce the commodity prices 
so the investors hope that this dividend favors india so that that's why they are assuming that rupee will appreciate and we are attracting more fps than china currently and also we are promoting initiatives like make in india so these all make believe at some point that india is going to do better in the coming years and they would benefit from the appreciation of rupee and other benefit for the investor is capital gains arising from the rupee appreciation are exempted from tax i think even authorities are confident that rupee won't appreciate that's why they might have made this rule i guess uh, anyways the capital gains arising from the rupee rupee appreciation are exempted from the tax and also less documentation is needed as there is no need to register as fpi foreign portfolio investment in india so that is also an advantage for the investor and for issuer as we discussed there is no currency risk involved as ours is a depreciating currency we believe uh, the issuer believes this would help them and also large amount of funds can be mobilized from the foreign market which can be used for the development of business or invest infrastructure in case of government so now you can see in the screen the similar kind of bonds issued by different countries have a look at this here you can see dim sum bond by china which is in renminbi currency and then matador bond by spain in euro and samurai bond by japan in yen and kangaroo bond or matilda bond by australia in australian dollar and maple bond which is by canada in canadian dollar and bulldog bond which is by uk in sterling or pound so that are the local currency bonds across the world similar to our masala bond so that's all about masala bond guys we'll now discuss couple of questions firstly previous year question upsc previous year question which we have seen in the start of this session question is with reference to ifc masala bonds sometimes seen in the news which of the statements given below is are correct statement 1 the international finance corporation which offers these bonds is an arm of world bank statement 2 they are rupee denominated bonds and are a source of debt financing for the public and private sector so you have to select the correct statements using the codes and first statement the ifc uh, is an arm of world bank that is true we have seen in the discussion and second statement they are rupee denominated bonds that is true and are a source of debt finance financing for the public and private sector that is also true we have seen that uh, pu both public and uh, private sector are using this instrument for debt financing so both the statements are correct so our answer comes option c both uh, one and two moving to another question with respect to masala bonds consider the following statement statement one through these funds would be raised from overseas market in indian rupees statement two only government and public sector banks are eligible to issue rupee denominated bonds overseas and statement three money raised through such bonds can be used for any activities such as real estate activities affordable housing projects etc so which among the which of the above statements is are correct option a one only option b two and three only option c three only and option d one and three only so you have to mark the correct statements and guys i am not giving answer to this question now Uh, based on our discussion please post the answer of this question on the comment section below i'll post the answer and explanation in the description area below the video so that is it that's all for uh, uh, today guys so thank you for paying attention and uh, please subscribe to our channel if you like this lesson we'll meet soon with another lesson and thank you once again thank you for watching